Health official says Grenada is equipped for any upsurge in COVID-19 cases. We'll have details to this story and more in the National Report. COVID-19 spreads from person to person through the droplets that are produced when someone coughs or sneezes, which makes it easy to spread between people in close contact. Now let's get prepared to stay healthy. To reduce your chance of catching or spreading COVID-19, practice these simple everyday preventative measures. Droplets can also land on surfaces, so ensure that you wash your hands frequently for a minimum of 20 seconds or sing the happy birthday song twice. Avoid touching your face, especially your eyes, nose and mouth. If soap and water are not readily available, Use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer with an alcohol content between 60 and 90%. 70% is ideal. When you cough or sneeze, cover your nose and mouth with a flexed elbow or a tissue. Dispose of the tissue immediately and then wash your hands. If you notice someone has a fever and cough, or other symptoms of respiratory illness, avoid close contact when possible. Let's all do our part to ensure that each and every Grenadian remains healthy. Our health is our collective responsibility. With the details to the news for Monday, January 23rd, I am Rikisha St. Louis. Acting Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sean Charles says Grenada is equipped and ready for any upsurge in COVID-19 cases. He says health officials are optimistic that the level of population immunity and experience from 2019 to present puts Grenada in a good position to survive any possible surge. Dr. Charles was Monday's guest on The Next Chapter, a GIS television health program with host Kevil Fedrick. There are currently 58 active cases recorded with one person hospitalized. We are concerned because we know the dangers that, 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 you know, that lurk with all of these variants. Because as long as COVID continues to spread from person to person, as long as there is any part of the world where COVID is allowed to continue to infect person to person, new variants are going to arise. All right? new, new variants are going to come up. Um, but we are optimistic that with our experiences that we've had in the past, um, with the level of population immunity that we have, we're optimistic that, you know, we should be able to, to you know, ride this, this, yeah. this, this, um, this kind of, um, you know, a rough period. Right. Um, because it is a rough period that, is, that, that you know, the world is going through. Um, we are in the flu season as well. Eh? All right, right. we're in the flu season. And so it's generally more favorable for a disease to spread. And with all the activities that you mentioned, yeah. it just increases the anxiety that, listen, you know, um, you know something can happen as a result of, mm -hmm. of this. Um, but we remain hopeful. We remain hopeful that, um, you know, that we will um, <laughs> we'll overcome all, uh, all of this. Health officials have been monitoring the rise of a new now dominant COVID-19 variant, XBB 1.5 cases in the US, UK and China, which is a sub-variant of Omicron. Dr. Charles says it may be a while before countries can safely say the pandemic is over. It will be difficult for any sort of declaration of an end to this pandemic, all right? Um, because we can, uh, we live in the Western Hemisphere, we can say, okay, pandemic is, is, is done. But if it is, the disease is continuing to spread in Asia or in Africa or in Europe from person to person, and the control, uh, you know, it, uh, they are unable to control it, new variants are going are, are gonna to pop up, all right? And the thing about the new variants is these are the these are the strains that evolved and they are able to escape all of these protective measures including immunity all right all right 
that gives them an advantage. So the virus, once it develops an advantage that allows it to survive, it's going to continue to spread. Now is not the time to allow complacency to step in. He has showed that health facilities are equipped with kits, vaccines and health supplies. Health promotion and public education will continue to prepare citizens. I think we are ready, as we are going to be. Uh, the, 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 the challenge generally comes when, when there is a surge on the healthcare system and um, you need to uh, recruit additional individuals to, to assist. Um, but um, we are projecting that, you know, we don't anticipate that, that this uh, should occur. So we continue to maintain our facilities for um, isolation and treatment at, right. at hospital. In fact, we have um, um, uh, one, I think we have one, um, one, one person admitted right now um, for COVID-related illness. Um, we continue to test at our health facilities and we continue to encourage everyone who, if you were exposed to uh, someone who is positive, you know, at least uh, five days after coming and test, visit our health facilities to, um, to, to test. And we, we, have, uh, we have testing supplies, we have sufficient testing supplies okay. available to manage um, any increased demand for that, uh, for that kind of um, service. The Ministry of Agriculture and Lands, Fisheries and Cooperatives has recently received more than 200 pieces of agricultural equipment from the People's Republic of China. Among others, 15 weed eaters, 2,000 meters of irrigation pipes, 200 forks and 15 water pumps were recently handed over to the Minister for Agriculture, Senator Adrian Thomas. He said it is government's plan to reduce Grenada's food import bill by 25% by the year 2025 and believes the equipment will aid in reaching this target. Our 2023 budget did emphasize the importance of food and nutrition security and definitely most of our work will be in that particular area. The, what we have gotten here today from the People's Republic of China will definitely be of maximum importance. I will make maximum use of it um, to advance that project. Um, we'll be paying special emphasis on root crops. Uh, we'll also be paying some emphasis on vegetable production because uh, as a nation we definitely need to feed ourselves. Too many people are, too many um, food products are being imported in Grenada and we want to reduce that by 25% in 2020. 2025. So we are starting the process now and what we have gotten here will be of tremendous importance. Chinese Ambassador His Excellency Wei Hong Shen is pleased to be in support of government's agricultural agenda. So as you know that uh, <coughs> agriculture plays a very important role, I think, and it's one of the pillars of the economy in Grenada. So uh, you know that uh, Agriculture government is on the priority list of the new government, and the new government is paying more attention and invest more on this sector. Grenada and the People's Republic of China are on the eighth phase of their cooperation agreement with a new batch of technical experts from China present at the Lassages farm to help with its implementation. Continuing the news, fostering opportunities for youth through entrepreneurship, employment and self-development was the focus of a recently held Climate Smart and Rural Enterprise Program, SIAP, and Skills for Youth Employment Sky Training and Job Fair. The job fair targeted young participants who completed training with SIA between 2019 and 2022 in areas like renewable energy, general agriculture and plumbing. Director of Social Development, Chrissy Wong Charles, told the participants that the training on gender awareness will foster a greater awareness for gender equality in society. This session aims to provide an integrated and interdisciplinary approach to understand the social and cultural constructions of gender that shapes the experiences of women and men in society. So why is this important to promote this learning here today? In a world and society where gender equality exists means that violence against women, girls, men and boys will be prevented.
is essential for economic and social prosperity, for us to exist in societies where the value of women and men are equal and safer and healthier. Head of the Rural Development, Dr. Stephen Fletcher, said gender awareness training is crucial towards social change. The world, and certainly in Grenada, we are going through some fundamental transformational changes in all aspects of life, including the social aspect, including the gender interactions that are taking place and the gender dynamism that is playing out in our society. Critical as that is, however, sometimes we run the risk of, mis of uh, misunderstanding and misinterpreting. When we hear gender, we think of feminine. We think of women actions. But I think in this context, we are really putting a gender lens on development, a gender lens on entrepreneurship, a gender lens on self-development. Jude Fraser pursued general agriculture at the T.A. Marisho Community College through the Climate Smart and Rural Enterprise Program. I must say that it was very great uh, to be a part of such initiative. Uh, the program itself uh, is, uh, is there to empower youths in Grenada. And uh, therefore, I encourage every youth in Grenada to take advantage of such a program. With such an opportunity, I am convinced that very soon I will engage and put my entrepreneurial ideologies into prospects within such opportunity. This is the National Report. The news will continue after the break. It is here again, it is here again. The Made in Grenada Expo is here again. And I just hope the whole of Grenada are ready because I sung in a clarion call. The Made in Grenada Expo is here again. The Made in Grenada Expo is on February 7th and the public is encouraged to come out and give full support and buy out all local products on show. Products manufactured right here in Grenada. 100% Grenadian. And it's happening right here at the National Stadium. Are taking in the Independence Parade and the Made in Grenada Expo one time. I am so excited. That's why I'm making a fireside. I bring my tent, my blanket, and all kind of thing. And I'm camping right here until everything's done on February 7th. The Made in Grenada Expo is here again. Welcome back. The founder of Authentic Caribbean Foundation, a U.S. nonprofit organization, Andrew Sharp, brought smiles to the faces of students following his recent toys and school supply drive. Although the focus of the organization is people with disability, the foundation has also adopted mainstream schools, including Wesley College and Hillsborough Secondary. The organization, which is just over 10 years old, seeks to provide education and training, health, community tourism, and support services to children and adults with disability and AIDS in the region. Sarana Mitchell accompanied Sharp and files this report. It was three days of giving to schools in Grenada for founder of the Authentic Caribbean Foundation, Andrew Sharp. The Jamaican-born philanthropist has been supporting special education schools on the island since 2021. One of the things we want to do, we want to bring the Caribbean region to that level in the disability community. We sign on the 2030 Sustainable Development Goal and we have signed on to the Human Rights and persons with disabilities, it's important, that's part of a human right issue that they must be included, they must be taken care of. So that's why I, I took the mantra and said, how can I ensure that I can provide that kind of support for, for the Caribbean region? At the Grenada School for Special Education, along with toys, he also supplied tools for the agriculture program there. For them, we decided also to support their agriculture class because food security is a big issue and and we also need to have workers in that field we cannot give up agriculture especially as a small island so if we can start from that level to teach them say farming and involvement in food processing and all of that is crucial we start from that level so i've been supporting 
part of the giveaway I bought pickaxe and shovel for the equipment that they don't have. Even though the focus of Authentic Caribbean Foundation is people with disability, the organization has extended itself to mainstream schools on the island, Wesley College Secondary School being one of them. Sharp delivered two AC units to the school and has pledged to supply nine more. Sharp also donated toys to the St. George's Methodist School, as well as to special needs students in Caracol and P.T. Martinique. The Hillsborough Secondary School also received equipment for its technical skills program from the foundation. Speaking on behalf of the Ministry of Education, Youth, Sports and Culture, Special Projects Officer Michelle Brathwood thanked Sharp for the donations and is looking forward to continued collaboration with the foundation. On behalf of the minister who would really like to be here but we, because of clash in terms of his schedule, he's unable to be here, Permanent Secretary Elvis Moraine and Ms. St. John John, our Special Education Officer, we thank you again for supporting special education, supporting our diverse learners. And it's not only the special education school, we realize as well, you're also supporting some of our mainstream schools. It's all about providing quality education. It's all about providing access. And indeed, you understand the trust. You understand what this is all about. And you have been very supportive. We continue to be there to collaborate with you. Since 2021, Grenada has been benefiting from the partnership with Authentic Caribbean Foundation. Teachers have received training in the area of inclusion with plans for more in the future. Thank you. For the National Report, I am Sarana Mitchell. That story just ended the National Report for Monday, January 23rd, recapping the top story. Top health official says Grenada is equipped for any upsurge in COVID-19 cases. On behalf of the entire news and production team, I am Rakesha St. Louis saying thank you for joining us.